All right, today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be learning about DNA versus RNA. Um, you should have your Venn diagram from iTunes U open. It should look just like this. Um, if you're having trouble uh, with it rotating, uh, what you can do is uh, lock your screen and then just turn your iPad. Um, you won't be able to use the magnifier at the bottom using Notability, but um, you can zoom in um, and write uh, within the Venn diagram itself. Um, so I'm going to start on the side with DNA. Since we've learned about DNA, uh, we should have a pretty good idea of what uh, DNA is all about. And then what I'll do is I'll kind of bounce back and forth to RNA, um, showing the differences um, along the way. So the first thing let's talk about is DNA shape. And DNA um, basically has a double helix uh, shape. So it's double-stranded. So, double-stranded, and its shape is a double helix. Okay, if we go to the RNA side, It is single stranded. Sometimes called a single helix. Okay. So if we, on the side here, we can go ahead and just draw um, maybe a picture of RNA. Uh, so RNA kind of has this twisty looking shape, but it's just a single side. Okay, where DNA, if we go on the other side here, DNA is your standard double helix, so it's got two sides. So in terms of shape, that's the, that's the main difference there. Um, the sugar in DNA, we have learned, is deoxyribose. The sugar for RNA is ribose. And this leads to the actual uh, name for both of these nucleic acids. Um, you know, so DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, whereas RNA is ribonucleic acid. So I I'm going to assume that all of you know how to spell DNA, so I will just help you out with RNA. So in both cases, the, the name of the actual nucleic acid comes from the sugar. DNA deoxyribose, so it's deoxyribonucleic acid. And RNA, ribose being the sugar, makes it ribonucleic acid. All right, let's go back to the DNA side here. So we've learned that DNA's job is to store and transmit genetic information. Okay? So talking about genes, talking about the DNA code itself, um, all has to do with uh, coding for your eye color and coding for um, your height and your hair color and, and all the genetic in, information that's passed on from parent to offspring. Uh, RNA, since it is a nucleic acid, does have a hand in, um, in, in this genetic info uh, transmission or at least um, the, the way it kind of works. And we're going to get into that throughout this unit. Um, but RNA is kind of a helper molecule. Uh, what it does is it acts as a template for making proteins. 
And remember we talked about DNA. Um, we talked about how the way DNA uh, controls your traits is that it builds proteins. And proteins basically make up your body. And um, kind of a general way to think about it is that, you know, if you have blue eyes, um, the reason you have blue eyes is because your DNA, when your eyes were being made, um, you know, told your body to build proteins for your eye that made your eyes blue. And, and, and the type of protein that was made for your eye um, made your eyes blue. Um, that's not 100% correct. I mean, it gets a little more complicated than that. But in general, that's how it works. Uh, that's how DNA and proteins and traits are all tied together. And RNA acts as a template for making proteins. Uh, it's a helper molecule for DNA. And we'll get into that um, a lot more when we start talking about uh, protein synthesis later in the unit. All right. Um, when we're talking about nitrogen bases, Remember that DNA has adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And the difference in DNA and RNA is that DNA, adenine, bonds with thymine. Okay? RNA, there's a little bit of a difference. It has adenine but it doesn't have thymine. Instead, it has a new nitrogen base called uracil. So whenever you're, you're, you're dealing with RNA and you want to write a T, you can't because it doesn't have thymine. It has uracil instead, so you use a U. Okay? All right. Back to the DNA side. We find DNA... In the, in the nucleus. That's the only place you find DNA. In RNA, it's found everywhere in the cell. So it can go anywhere it wants. This is what makes RNA um, a versatile molecule that helps DNA with protein synthesis. So it can be found everywhere the nucleus, the cytoplasm, the ribosomes. So found everywhere in the cell, okay? All right. DNA, there's only one type. I mean, DNA is DNA. So all DNA looks the same has the same job. It's the same type. RNA, that's not the case. There are several types of RNA, um, but we're only going to be talking about three of them. So several types of RNA. And the three that we're going to talk about is tRNA, mRNA, and rRNA. And notice the correct way to write those is, is you start off um, with, a, uh, with a letter that's not capitalized. So in tRNA, the T is actually lowercase, um, and then RNA is capital. Okay? Um, and let's talk about what each of these stand for. We're going to get into, into these a lot more in detail later. Um, but tRNA stands for transfer RNA. I'm just going to write the, what the first letter stands for. Okay. Uh, mRNA is called messenger RNA. And rRNA, the R stands for ribosomal. And we'll talk about uh, these more in depth um, later on. But in general, ribosomal RNA... Um, basically builds the ribosome. Uh, it, it, it's, it, 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 it makes up the ribosome is a better way to say it. Um, messenger RNA is exactly what it sounds like. It's a messenger. It brings codes back and forth um, from the nucleus out to the cytoplasm. And transfer RNA um, transfers 
uh, amino acids from the cytoplasm to the ribosome. And we're going to get into these in, in a lot more detail uh, when we start getting into uh, the nitty-gritty of protein synthesis. Okay? All right. Well, we've left the middle. So let's go back to the top here, and let's talk about how these are the same. Well, considering that DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA is ribonucleic acid, that tells us our first one, which is that they're both nucleic acids. So they are both nucleic acids, okay? Um, and because of that, because they're nucleic acids, that means they're both made up of the same monomer. So they're both made up of nucleotides. Okay. Um, that means, of course, that they both contain a phosphate. Oops, that looks like an R. Do a little quick fix on that one. A phosphate. A sugar. And a base. So they all have, um, both DNA and RNA have phosphate, sugar, and a base as their, as their main building block. Okay. Um, they both have specific jobs in making proteins. They're all related in terms of making proteins. Okay. Um, we talked about the nitrogen bases. Remember, the only difference is adenine thymine for DNA and adenine uracil for RNA. Um, but guanine and cytosine are the same. So both DNA and RNA have guanine bonding to cytosine. Okay? All right. Um, they're both genetic codes. There are some organisms that don't actually even have DNA. They actually have only RNA. So they both are a genetic code. Oop. No, I can't count, obviously. Need to go back to elementary school. Seven. Uh, they're both important for making proteins. We kind of talked about that up above. But you can't have... Um, you know, you can't build a protein without both of these uh, important molecules. So both important for making proteins. All right. And that pretty much uh, brings us to the end of our Venn diagram. Um, so with that, uh, make sure that, um, uh, that you study this because uh, you will be having um, some quizzes coming up. Um, dealing with DNA and RNA, and obviously for the test at the end. Uh, make sure you have a really good handle on the differences between these two, uh, because obviously we're going to be getting into protein synthesis, and uh, the more you understand about, about RNA and how it works, um, the better you'll do in that process. All right, thank you.